Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And not too long ago, I tried to find out what the best free drawing app was on the um, iPad. And today I wanted to compare two paid apps, one of which is extremely expensive. So let's get started. So the first app I'm gonna review is called Adobe Fresco. It just came out and at first I thought it was free, which was a little surprising coming from Adobe, but it turns out I was wrong. Um, it has a bunch of stuff all over the page about it that says things like start for free and that's because basically uh, there's a limited version of Fresco that you can use for free but um, the, the uh, version that you're going to download is the full version and it's going to be after your six month trial $10 a month which makes it $120 a year for every year as long as you decide to keep it on your iPad. Now I think this is extremely weird for a drawing app especially when they're main competitor, Procreate only costs $10 to keep forever. Um, so I really wanted to compare it to Procreate and basically see what's so great about it that would justify this enormous like subscription bill. Now um, the main thing that they're really pushing is these brushes. Uh, the brushes are amazing and let me just show you what they look like. Basically these are their like star, um, they're called live brushes and they basically animate and react just like a real oil or watercolor would. They have spread, feather, and color combination um, sort of technology in these brushes that is completely unparalleled to any other digital brush that I've honestly ever used. Um, so I can see why they're so excited about it. And unsurprisingly, if you don't get the premium version of Fresco, uh, the brushes are one of the things that will be taken away. Uh, they're not specific about which ones you won't get, but I would um, bet you a lot of money that the live brushes are one of the things that you're not going to get if you're getting the uh, non-premium version of Fresco. Um, so for me, because I'm a comic artist, while I find all of these brushes really, really interesting and cool, I am more disturbed by what's missing here than what is present. Um, one of the biggest things that really frustrated me while I was testing it out um, was that there is no uh, magic wand tool, which basically means like if you want the program to automatically select for you based on your line art um, an area of your drawing, you're just not going to be able to do that because the selection tools that they have are only the lasso and like a sort of paint in your selection sort of tool. Um, I found that to be pretty surprising again because this is one of the most expensive drawing apps I've ever seen because of its subscription style pricing. Um, I was really surprised that there's something like that missing. They also don't have a text tool which is really shocking because they have these amazing halftone brushes that seem to imply that they want manga and comic artists to be working on the app um, but without a text tool you're going to have to hand letter everything and I don't know many comic artists who choose to do that all of the time um, so hopefully that's something they're planning to add um, because honestly having half tone brushes with no text tool just seems kind of mean my biggest frustration with the program was the paint bucket. Um, the paint bucket has a few different problems that I found to be extremely worrisome, and I'm not sure if there's just something I'm missing. I tried really hard to find um, information about it. It is an app that just came out, so there isn't too much like um, information about the specifics of the app, but in general, it seems like the paint bucket tool only works on, well, it only references the layer that it's currently painting into, which is a huge problem if you're the type of artist who has a line art and a color layer that are separate. Um, because if you want to have the paint bucket tool fill in based on the line art, but on a different layer, it's just not going to do that. The other problem I found with it was that it always leaves that pixely white space around where it fills. Um, if you increase the tolerance on it, which I am glad they have a feature to do that, um, it seems to not make it go in any further. It doesn't like feather it out. It just decides whether or not thinner lines are going to count as actual lines or not, how much sort of gap forgiveness you're going to get. Um, it doesn't seem to have any effect on um, reducing that like white pixelation around the space that you're filling. So basically with, with that, you either have the choice of using like a um, perfectly smooth brush, which seems like a waste in a program that is so focused on having beautiful textured brushes, or you're going to have to um, go in every time you use the fill bucket and clean up those little sketchy white areas. Um, and that's super annoying. That should definitely not be happening. I do not know why the paint bucket tool works this way. For me personally, I have really mixed feelings about this app because for me, I get to have it for free, well kind of, because it comes with my Creative Cloud, but Creative Cloud costs 
it's like $50 a month. So that ends up being a huge expense. The only reason it feels like the app is free to me is because I was already paying this huge bill to Adobe. If you're not someone who's paying that, I can't imagine that you would ever choose to buy this app on a single $10 app subscription. It just seems crazy to me. But on the other hand, it is true that the brushes are some of the best I've ever seen. And it's really fun to play with this app. I think a lot of people are really gonna like it during their free trial and they're gonna be really sad when they can't use it anymore. Um, so I just really don't know what to think about it, honestly. All right, so next up, I'm going to review Procreate. Now, Procreate is probably the most famous iPad drawing app, and I've been using it for a while. I decided to swatch all of the brushes that Procreate has just to compare it to the brushes of Fresco, since Fresco is so proud of their brushes. And I will say that it did make it very apparent that a lot of the sort of bonus brushes that you get with Procreate are kind of just weird stamps of stuff. Um, there's a lot of like splotch brushes and brushes where you're just sort of painting in what looks like a grayscale photo of something, and it definitely doesn't work as nicely as many of the brushes in Fresco. Speaking of brushes, it's also important to note that while Fresco can import ABR files, which is the Photoshop brush file type, um, Fresco cannot. Despite the fact that you can actually export your images to PSD from Procreate, um, they don't support that ABR file type. So if you have a lot of ABR brushes that you really like, that may be a compelling reason to try out Fresco and see if it would be worth your while. One major thing that I really love about Procreate so far is that despite the fact that it's been sort of the dominant art app on the App Store for a while, they are constantly making changes to improve it. And I think that's a really good sign for the longevity of this program. I don't know, obviously, how Adobe is going to deal with Fresco, and I know that they plan to add more features, but in general, Adobe isn't great about changing up their programs, at least in regards to like Photoshop, Animate, stuff like that. Like. Photoshop Creative Cloud has not changed almost at all since I first got it and I've had it for a long time now. Um, so hopefully they won't do that with Fresco too, but I know for a fact that Procreate is one of those programs whose value keeps increasing because they keep adding new things to it. The ability to add text was one of the most major ones, and like I said, if you're going to be using this for comics at all, that's going to save you a lot of time. Hand lettering is extremely tedious, and it just doesn't make your final product look as polished if lettering's not really your thing. Speaking of them constantly adding to the app, there are some rumors on the wind that the next patch of Procreate, or at least one that's coming up soon, is going to have some pretty powerful animation tools, which I know a lot of you guys are going to be excited about because I know a lot of you guys are animators or aspiring animators, and um, it looked really cool from the clip I saw on Twitter. So that might end up being a, a deciding factor between the two for you if you are someone who's interested in animation because I don't think there's anything um, that I saw about Fresco that implies they're ever going to do any animation. In fact, I would be more inclined to think that Adobe would release a whole new app for that because Fresco did seem to be extremely focused on these like thick, very believable painting type tools and that's not really what um, works well with animation anyway because you know that sort of randomness makes it extremely difficult to animate. I won't dwell on animation any longer because it's not even in Procreate yet and I don't know if they would add it but I did want to mention it for you guys who are interested in that. Um, one thing that I did really appreciate about Procreate is that it has all of the blending modes that you would get with Photoshop and that you would get with Fresco. Initially I was really impressed with Fresco having every single blending mode that um, layers usually have in Photoshop, but then I realized Procreate has it too, so it's not actually that big of a deal. Um, and it is really nice to have those things if you like to do dramatic things with light, um, luminosity, soft light, hard light. Those are some of my favorite like um, more complex blending modes that I like to use on the computer and being able to use them on my iPad is really nice. I've been primarily comparing Procreate with Fresco, but I should also probably mention whether or not I think Procreate is worth the $10 price tag over a lot of the free programs, which I have discussed in previous videos. And I will say right off the bat that I think Procreate is well worth that one-time price of $10. It really does have a lot more than a lot of the other art apps, and I just find it so easy to use and so intuitive. It's just so nice. It 
works really well it's not glitchy or anything like that and I suspect it's only going to get better and better with time so I highly recommend if you like drawing on your tablet a lot to just go for it and buy it I don't think you'll regret it at all so final thoughts on these two paid programs. Obviously, I love Procreate and I think it's well worth the money. Fresco, on the other hand, I really can't recommend unless you already have Creative Cloud. If you have Creative Cloud, you're going to get it for free anyway, so it's well worth trying out, playing with the really cool paint brushes and everything. It's really awesome. Um, I love using them. I love the halftone brushes. Basically, just Kyle T. Webster's brushes are excellent, um, and the rest of the app is fine. Like, it doesn't have anything that is substantially better than Procreate other than those brushes, but they are worth checking out they're that special so um, yeah if you already have creative cloud definitely download fresco and check it out if you don't have any sort of subscription to Adobe just stick with procreate it's a fantastic program and it really gives you pretty much everything that you'd need Thank you so much to my wonderful patrons, including Bella Story, Compo Pong, Clockwork Construct, Dr. Casket, Ilari Alui, Elizabeth Album, Faino, Greer the Animator, Hachiubi, Yara Formoso, Imagine Creations, Ivan Rodriguez, JJJ, Joseph Copel, Drunk on Insomnia, Katie Alina, Katie Marigold, Lip 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 Lip, Mike Dactyl, Mr. Dr. Pants, Nora Cornelson, Ollie, Rosie Warlock, Rudy, Scott Steffes, Surgeon Pendulum, Storm Scribbles, The Artsy Moose, Throat Foam, Tom David, Johansson, your boy ST, Zoe Stardust, and Magath.